so Jamstack, huh? What's yeah. up with that? Um, how how did you? And I've I've kind of heard you talk about this on podcast, so this may be at, at least for me. Like I've heard some of it, but I think a lot of the people haven't. So what was your like? How did you get into the Jamstack, and then um, why have you stuck with it? Why have you been creating so much content uh, around it so far? Yeah, so like the first introduction to like Jamstack as we know it was kind of hearing about Gatsby and Dentlify and just kind of playing around with it and seeing how it was because like I came from a place where I was building my own webpack configurations and mm. that, that can be brutal uh, to say the least so like having that ability to spin up a new site with Gatsby like that quickly was just amazing where I didn't have to touch any of that um, but then like on top of that taking that and deploying it to Netlify like for a developer who doesn't want to care about like the DevOps and all that stuff like I could do so much stuff without having to worry about that right all on my own um, and that's really what kept it, uh, you know, made it stick with me. Like, I, I love how productive I can be by myself with like building websites and stuff without having to worry about any of that stuff. Like, it just works. Like, I build my app and I push it out there and it just works. Um, lately, I've been doing a lot of work with Next.js. Really love the uh, framework they put together and the hard work. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, there's just so many awesome tools in the, in the community right now. It's great to see where it's going. Yeah. So you mentioned several of the benefits of the Jamstack and the things that you're interested in. What would you say are a few of your your favorite features and then how have you used those in some of the projects that you've worked on? Just personal stuff or demos that you've done for videos or talks or whatever. Like what are some of those favorite things for you in the Jamstack? So I think like the core of it that gets me really excited is at the end of the day, like we're dumping these static assets and files in static storage. So there's like, first of all, that's really like flexible and transportable. So like I can move that around to really anywhere. Um, sure. But then like the fact that it is static assets, like I know buzzwords that you hear from like <laughs> AWS, like infinitely scalable, but it's true. Like so many people can hit your site. And I know that not everybody in the world is going to ever hit ColbyFayok.com, but like, if or it, are it they? Happened, right. But if it, <laughs> when it happen, happens, <laughs> exactly what it happens, like, I don't have to think about all those things. Like it just works, you know, um, that's, and I love like all the different tools that have come along with it. Like, you know, off zero doing, um, authentication with the jam sack and everything. It's Shout just, out to so, off zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just so many cool things going on with it. Um, I love it. Yeah. So there's, I had a comment on a recent YouTube video that was how I migrated from WordPress to a static site. And someone said, React is not a static site. And I could totally mm -hmm. like, we could totally have this, like him and I could have this debate, but like our definition of static has evolved drastically from what like static 10 years ago meant there was no JavaScript on a page. That's not mm -hmm. what it means now. It means that they're static assets that get hosted somewhere and then when you request a site, those things get just sent down directly to you as opposed to in a WordPress environment where like you have, uh, you go to a blog post, what happens is it makes a request to the server, it goes to the database, it grabs the information, it then uses that to create HTML that then gets sent back to the user as opposed to say, give me the blog post and it's already there. It doesn't mean there's yeah. not functionality, there's not uh, dynamic functionality on the site with JavaScript. It means that those assets are actually served uh, statically which is incredibly powerful. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting. Like, I, I guess that's partly why they came out with, like, they coined the term, Netlify coined the term Jamstack, but, um, like, because of the stigma around the word static. Um, but, like, interestingly, I, I find it interesting because it that conversation hasn't come up too often with me because I feel like the static part of it can almost be an implementation detail because it's, like, ultimately, like, as a developer like i'm providing a web app right like they might not necessarily need to know that it's in static yep. storage right um just the fact that it's infinitely scalable because it is um but yeah and and because of that there's like the traditional benefits of jamstack it's fast right because it's not doing a real-time calculation of things to send back html yeah uh, it's a lot more secure because if you think about a wordpress world if you had a wordpress backend uh, or just wordpress deployed somewhere you have to make sure it's updated you had to deploy it to get it there at some point. Like there's some one click installs and that sort of stuff, but you have to make sure it's updated because there's, because WordPress is such a popular platform. It's also targeted a lot for uh, vulnerabilities and stuff. So you have to make mm -hmm. sure that your, uh, your WordPress is updated as well as the plugins that go along with it. And in this case, exactly like you said, static assets, throw them up there, they're ready to go. And if you want to move them to somewhere else, it's just as easy to move them somewhere else also. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's interesting, like even with WordPress, like on the Jamstack, like because I uh, I have this starter that I've been working on as a Next.js WordPress starter where it sucks in the WordPress site and dumps out a static site. Like still, even having that separately as a headless CMS, you still don't have to worry about a lot of those things because when you're trying to actually use WordPress as is, like you have to deal with some of those scalability issues with like the server and such and the security, but you're able to more easily lock that away from the public and really you're just pulling that at um like compile, when you're editing build something time. more compile time yeah. yeah so i actually have a question about that and um headless wordpress is something that like i've one I've, I've seen you talk about and that's really cool that you're doing the like template work that you're doing one of the things i didn't quite realize like i know you can use headless wordpress by like there's graphql layers and there's rest apis and that sort of stuff is there, is there a way to not have, like if you have a WordPress server deployed somewhere, is there a way to not have a UI page at all? That's a good, you mean like the admin interface? Mm -hmm. well, um, that's a good question. Cause like, I feel like you need the, ad, you have to, do you yeah. mean like the, the website itself? Cause I'm pretty sure there's themes so. that like just make just the wipe page it all blank. out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't toyed around with that too much. Cause I still kind of just. I don't know, like what I've been trying to do with the starter that I've been working with is that you just literally take a default WordPress site and you plug it in. Yep. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Yeah. But yeah, like there's a lot of things you can do to kind of optimize it at that point because you don't need to worry about like the actual um, scalability of it. Yeah, because then you're like, you're kind of taking it, taking control of that yourself by building it into a static site. Yeah. Um, and it's also great because like, I still, I still believe that WordPress is one of the better consumer facing uh, CMS is out there where like a there's a lot of great solutions now, but they're very developer focused, which is cool. Uh, but like mm -hmm. if you're delivering this to a client, WordPress is very familiar for people and like it's easy way for people to still use it, but you still get the best of both worlds with the Jamstack. Yep. Yeah. And like you said, so many people are used to it. It's a familiar thing. I do think like hello CMS options are getting better and I think we'll yeah. continue to kind of gain some more traction. Uh, Cosmic is one where they really advertise specifically for um, being useful for people that aren't developers and trying to have mm -hmm. that dashboard be really intuitive for people to learn. I think that's like everyone's goal too. I'll just um, check that out. I haven't used it before. Yeah, you definitely should. Um, I did I did a video on them before and then I uh, might be doing a video with them in the coming year, which will be cool. Nice. Um, and the idea of like favorite part of Jamstack, I just wanted to mention like from my perspective and you kind of touched on this, as a developer now, when I work on my site, it's a static site, all I do is check code in and push it and that's it there's no like after deploying in netlify having my site connected to the github repository connected to a specific branch after i push to that branch it runs a build command it's deployed and i can add serverless functions behind the scenes just with adding those files inside of my source code so as a developer there's no maintenance there's no server deployment there's no like even like devil's advocate there's no install of a wordpress there's no setup there like yeah. i have all of my stuff I push it and then now it's ready to go. And that as a developer, I think is really super cool. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Cause I've definitely been on the side of, th on the other side of things with my last job where like you have to deal with all the different layers of deploying a static yep. site on, on <laughs> AWS, which you know is doable. And you definitely get a lot more like fine grain control if you do it straight through AWS. But like with Netlify and Vercel, just be able to check it in and it's out there. It's, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's yeah. so beautiful. It's great. Uh, I haven't actually, I love Next.js. I haven't actually deployed anything to Vercel. So people, okay. Vercel people out there, I need to do it. I will do it in uh, in this next year, and I'll probably do a video on that as well. So those are a couple of uh, a couple of my favorite things about the Jamstack. A couple of your favorite things about the.